Welcome to part 9 of Parthia Abridged in Rome Remastered. Last time we were swatting away various counterattacks really, constantly breaking sieges on ourselves and defeating small armies. We also did go on the offensive though, taking a settlement from the Scythians in the far north, and we're now moving towards Jerusalem. We've even got a siege drawout on Jerusalem right here, although it is with our special army, the one that's kind of normal. So here we are walking a big formation of infantry towards the enemy. They've actually sent one skirmish unit to come out and face us on its own. Well, I decided to just run at them with my general and see what this would do. A bit risky because they're going to run back towards their formation and we don't want to get swarmed by those chariots and pikes. We're not going to pursue, instead we'll bring up our infantry block. The enemy's formation was in flux the whole time, moving about because I'm going around behind them. We're going to stop right in front of them, we can defeat these cav on the right flank, that's easy enough, and we've got more cav sneaking up behind the enemy where some skirmishers will leave themselves open. Now a chariot charge comes right at us, but we're ready, this is the army that's good against chariots because we can have a nice thick spear line. The chariots go in, apply their charge bonus but then stop and get absolutely pummeled by the return spear attack, so we quickly turn away some chariots. The only thing we need to do now is not get hit by them as they leave. This is a siege drawout as mentioned and it's going to be difficult because they have quite a few light cav and chariot units that can leave and we might not be able to do anything to stop them if we don't happen to be in their way. Here we are in the way of these chariots and I'm actually doing an experiment of sorts. We're going to see if this routing chariot unit will do damage to my horse archers. Yes, they totally do, but we also do some damage back. Just wanted to see what the trade was. But they get past me and that's that really, once they're past me we can't run after them fast enough to stop them, inconvenient. At least the battle itself is generally going well, the formation has been obliterated, their pikes are trying to rout or withdraw, we're in the money here. We almost take a chariot charge onto those horse archers, that could have been bad, but they decide to withdraw at the last second along with everything else. Now it's just a case of surrounding and pounding what we can, but as mentioned, various things will be able to escape because we don't have the speed to do anything about it. Leading to this final result, it went pretty well, we didn't take many casualties. The enemy's two armies are really dead, but a unit's worth of stuff is alive somewhere. That means we don't get the siege draw out and we won't take Jerusalem this turn. We can besiege it, but before I do, I looked around to see if there was a spy that could sneak in and open the gates for me. None nearby, so we'll do it the ever so slightly slower way of taking it next turn once those rams are ready. We've also got another project nearby, Petra, which rebelled against us. Now we need to take it back, and we've already got a few units on the way there. As it happened though, in the end turn sequence they sallied out against my besieging force. Now we can take a closer look at their upgraded units, including the level 2 silver armor peasants. Their skin is especially thick, I suppose, because their naked upper body can now stop an arrow or two. Dangerous stuff. We probably could do something about this, but we don't need to, so I'm going to withdraw. We have stuff already on the way down here to support this siege. So I thought we might as well just wait a couple of turns and do it again, and the enemy don't press out to attack us after that. Here is the auto-resolve at Jerusalem. Our general in this army, our faction leader, actually died during that one turn of siege, so he missed the chance to see the city. Oh well, the city gets half of its population sent off as slaves, and that will be just enough to hold on to it public order wise. We'll need to refit this army a bit and try to get it some actual horse archers, but we're doing well against Egypt overall. Pontus though are starting to make an appearance there, a big army was spotted for a second, moving towards Hatra, we'll need to look into that. Scythia make a couple of annoying attacks, one in the top right somewhere, the area I've moved on from, they've snuck some units back over there, and another group is intercepting my army that was moving for their next settlement. This isn't so bad because we can probably win this battle, we even have the advantage on the balance bar, and they have some foot units that are going to struggle against our mounted units. Step 1 sit around and shoot at them, and walk around on their flanks as well. This does a decent job of keeping their foot archers, the natural counter to horse archers, from really shooting at us. And then once there are a few gaps, we can just start running around in their formation with our general's bodyguard and the like. That's going to be enough really, this battle's effectively already over in the first minute. We've broken their formation up, the units are running all over the place, constantly being hit by arrows, and that's going to wear them down obviously. A few melee attacks on their stuff remaining in the middle is enough to end this battle. 
Easy peasy, so thanks to the Scythians for attacking us there. That's got these guys out of the way, leaving the general area pretty undefended. You can see the settlement we're going for is almost empty. Absolutely perfect. So the enemy are being punished for sending stuff off to attackers elsewhere. We're just going to attack them even harder. It kind of looks like we have the advantage over here with this siege, because they only have a few small cav units. The only reason our flag is so full there is because the place is full of peasants. And I wasn't so sure I wanted to charge out and sally with peasants, so I thought I will send something back to deal with this. It means leaving Tanis somewhat undefended, but okay, we're just going to do that. It'll take a few turns as well to get back there. Since those guys don't have infantry, they can't siege assault, meaning we have as much time as the siege will give us, which is probably enough time. I seem to remember looking and it was okay. Now we're going to do something about the Petra situation. Don't need that second general, so he can go and lead the Jerusalem army. We'll then combine these two groups to make a nice full stack and start the siege. We actually do have a siege drawout potential situation here, if I'd just gone around the town. Well, we're doing it the slow way again, just because. Looks like we've got time, and I'm not too interested in attacking Egypt much more at this point anyway, because as mentioned in the previous part, we do want to focus on the Seleucids at some point. We need to stop that invasion coming in from Pontus though, and we've got troops arriving to sort that out. I had a bunch of guys coming down from the Cotes area, and I've been recruiting constantly at Hatra, so we're going to have roughly a stack of horse archers in the area very soon. Plenty of Seleucid activity on our tiny border with them, but we're stacking up at Antioch as well to deal with that. We got this interesting offer from the Seleucids. They want to take Antioch and I have to give them a bit of money, but in return they'll be my protectorate. Normally I would take this deal to get rid of the war and have a protectorate to feel good about myself, but in this case, because our objective at this stage in the campaign is only to defeat the Seleucids, we've already got the regions we need. We have to remain at war with them and ignore any deals. But I would like to get peace with everyone else, they just don't really want to, and it's hard to offer deals because our diplomats, our one diplomat actually, uh, needs to be moved around to do it. You can see a stack of Seleucid stuff is standing outside Antioch, so they've got a show of force there. We'll still keep recruiting to deal with that. In the meantime, the Pontic army has stood on this bridge on our border. We're going to stand off against them with this pretty decent three-quarter stack of horse archers. Their flag is very full, but it's only like two-thirds of an army of all infantry. That would probably go right down if they actually attacked us. The only reason I didn't attack them right now is because they're on a bridge and doing a horse archer attack across a bridge would be difficult. Although we are going to do this easy attack this turn. The Scythians have a few units in this town. These archers came over to investigate the gate and got shot. Well, I suppose we're getting used to this by now. The AI doesn't really know what to do when you've just spammed the gate area with ranged units. Well, they know enough to run out of range. They don't just stand there and die, usually. Although they did come back for a second round and get killed, so effectively they did. What I think is actually going on here is that when the AI gives their archer units an attack order in towns, Ranged units like to have direct line of sight, so it's running to a waypoint near us, and the waypoint is probably on that T-junction. So before they can attack, they have to run to where we are and die as a result. All good stuff. Now, an extremely messy conclusion to the battle begins. I initially thought I'll take down their general's bodyguards with my mercenary hoplites. Problem was, they got broken up much more than expected. They didn't really act like a phalanx and ended up losing their melee to the enemy general. At the back here we've got a bunch of dogs, just going to swarm them with a bunch of cav and try to take them down. I think dogs might actually be good against cav, I can't quite remember. We don't seem to be getting annihilated there at the very least. But over here things are going to be messy as mentioned. At this stage it's just their general fighting his way through all of my horse archers in a big column, so he'll have tons of advantages against each unit. But the whole time, the horse archers further back are raining arrows on the situation. Extreme casualties, a very bad trade, we end up actually losing more men than the enemy did. That might be the first battle where that's happened. Bad stuff, but it is the end of the Scythians in this area. They're down to like one or two settlements now. The extent to which they can annoy us has been reduced massively. And of course, we don't have to attack them, really, I just needed to get them out of my hair. I think we've done that now. And here come the Seleucids. 
They start a siege at Antioch. We've got quite a lot of stuff on the inside, so we're ready for that to some extent. As for Pontus, well, they're not going to try it. They decided to call off their little invasion there. Although I do want to chase them down, because I think we would beat their army in a straight-up field battle. Handily, that Scythian siege behind our lines has got away. They appear to be walking home. This would cause them to intercept my army here. We're going to get out of the way. I'd rather they walk all the way back to one of the settlements and we'll fight them there. And we'll be recruiting at Tanais to give it something of a garrison too. On the Egyptian front, a few guys from the Petra Rebellion have wandered off so we can fight them on their own. This is actually a bit difficult because they've got these Nile spearmen who are better than the usual phalanx the Egyptians bring. And they have that silver armor upgrade. So even hitting them with javelins, a classic weakness of the phalanx, doesn't really do very much. We can negate this somewhat by attacking from multiple angles, or specifically the back and the right side. Not many horse archers to use here, but thanks to the phalanx being real slow, we can do pretty much the same thing with our slingers and peltas. They're very unlikely to get us into melee if we don't want to fight them. And here's a nice throw right into the back of this unit of spearmen. Doesn't do a massive amount, but that's going to do more than the front. Just a shame that these rebels are always so strong and better than regular Egyptian forces. They'd probably be dead by now. So the battle ends up going on for like five minutes, which is quite a long time for just shooting at a couple of units because they died very slowly, had to work through plenty of ammo. We'll get there in the end. And of course, they never pose a threat to us because we can disengage all the time. Once they're dead, this force will go back towards Jerusalem. We're going to be building up a second army over here to complement the army at Petra and have two stacks in this general area to defend. And defending will be my main focus there from now on, really. Against Pontus, it's time to push out and pursue their main force. The first thing we have to do is clear this blockage. A couple of generals were standing in our way. They were willing to engage us. Well, fine. We had a perfect map where we're on top of mountains in comparison to them, so we can just rain arrows all over the place. Even without this, this would be an easy battle. The fact the AI is defending makes it not do anything particularly useful. It's standing there trying to hold its ground, just dying. It then later started running around the map, and we have to run after them like this with our huge cloud of horse archers gradually taking them down. Well, it worked out, took a few casualties to friendly fire, but that's to be expected. Now we go on to pursue their main force, and they know they're in trouble, they're getting out of there. We're then in the zone of control of this other general, he gets out of the way, we're back in the zone of control of the main army again, this time we can start a fight with their general coming in as reinforcements. So now it's time to test out how a big line of horse archers does against a big line of infantry. For this one, we do need to keep in mind the lesson that was mentioned earlier in the campaign. And that is that a single unit of Persian Cav can't necessarily defeat a single unit of Eastern Spearmen or equivalent infantry units in a straight up shooting match, because you'll run out of ammo before you do enough damage to rout them. And it's very hard to rout things with ranged attacks anyway. Not that we shouldn't try to do that because we can whittle them down as much as possible and then, if we have to, we'll just run into them with the cav and maybe that will rout them and end the battle. At first we're moving backwards to get the enemy off this hillside. We did have great terrain at first, but it was so steep we couldn't really see the enemy to shoot at them. So we end up bringing the battle onto the top of this hill, and now the micro-madness begins as we just run about all over the place. The enemy formation is broken up, pursuing all of our different pockets. We just need to keep the camera switching between the different pockets to make sure none of them are getting into too much trouble. And meanwhile, our troops will be firing at will at stuff. Very inefficient, it would be better to shoot over the tops of the leading units into the flanks of ones behind, things like that. But with real-time micro, that is not going to happen in a battle like this. Their general is chasing us dangerously towards the edge of the map there. That's where skirmishing won't work, so need to pay double attention to that situation. We actually need that skirmish mode off. Might have seen right there, just because it was on when I gave the orders to move away from the line, the orders were immediately cancelled and they instead tried to move closer to the line. So once you're near the edge of the map, that skirmish mode needs to go away. <laughs> Some frantic camera movements there. I don't know what to look at. We are running away somewhat successfully all over the place, relying on skirmish mode. But here's where it breaks down. We do end up in melee with their general. We're going to immediately lose a unit of Persian calf to that. But my general rear attacks theirs and combined with them being stuck in place fighting from the front, 
this is enough to take their general out of the picture. I'm not sure if it applies properly in this game, but routing their general might cause a morale debuff on the leading army, because they're technically not in the same army. I don't know if we need to get the captain of this force to route to have the same effect. I seem to remember that changes from game to game in Total War. Who knows, but it's a good thing regardless. Now our men will come back and continue the Micro Madness. Ammo is going to start running low, but the enemy's troop numbers are running low as well. And they're really not having a good time trying to catch up with us. We're mostly avoiding getting caught in melee with the spears. Had to do a big uh, circumventory route around the enemy on the hillside there. That's going to ruin our stamina, but theirs as well. Up on top of the hill, some very inefficient shooting into the front of the enemy units. Probably wasting some ammo here. We could do things more efficiently, but we're not going to. Here some hillmen are going to get attacked from multiple sides in melee. That takes out the leader of the main army, so there we go, we finally got that. They're still not going to rout though, because they're not quite interested in routing while they're outside of melee for the most part. That means it's time to get into melee. They made it easy for us by moving their units off. They started walking back down the hill essentially, as if they're withdrawing. I don't think they actually are. Not sure where they're going, but as long as one unit's a bit isolated from the others, it's safe to do a couple of flank attacks at once, and with the enemy's army so beaten up, that's enough to rout them, we're not going to take too many casualties or any perhaps doing that. We don't need to actually attack these last couple of half-dead units, because they rout, and we've already hit the threshold, so we can just end the battle right there. Although it's always confusing, when there are two armies on the field, the threshold rules are harder to work out. I think it's fine here. In the end, a really good battle. We barely got caught in melee at all, so we only lost like a hundred or so troops. They lost well over 2,000 troops and many units, and because only one unit can be recruited per turn per settlement, it's going to take them at least a few turns just to make those troops again, let alone send them over here. So we've bought ourselves a nice bit of time, time we can use to keep advancing with our relatively healthy looking horse archer force. We can even add in some more horse archers just to make it even worse for the enemy. In the next turn, we go on to fight the nearby group. It's a bunch of cav. At first, they stand and fight. But then when the fight actually starts, they wisely withdraw immediately. So it's kind of annoying the AI is doing this to me. They're just showing off their ability to withdraw. Just withdraw on the campaign map if you want. Although they might be doing the exploit, because if you withdraw in a manual battle, you actually withdraw much further, which benefits them here. They were able to escape the horse archer blob. And that blob is now going down towards Tarsus. We can either attack the Seleucids or come in from behind and disrupt their siege of Antioch. So that's all looking good. Up top, we're just going to consolidate everything together at these forward camps, which seem to be having some public order issues. We can sort it out right now by throwing in these troops that are arriving, and we'll continuously replace units with peasants, which have big unit sizes and contribute more. Also, recruiting peasants reduces the population size, which increases public order too. The Seleucids make their attack against Antioch before we can come in and cause any shenanigans with our horse archer ball. Probably the right decision from them. So here we have a different kind of battle, a walled settlement defense with mostly infantry involved. Well, that's going to be a bit special and it's going to be a long one. So we'll take a decent look at this at the start of the next part.